Good afternoon. Today we're at the Britannia Mine Museum and National Historic Site. Let's go and explore. Valuable ore was first discovered in the Britannia area in 1888. The mine was opened in 1904 and continued operation until 1974. Types of ore found in the mine included metal sulfides, pyrite used to create copper, and gold and silver. Over the lifetime of the mine, over 50 million tons of ore were extracted. At its peak of production, the mill was processing 7,000 tons of ore per day and was the largest copper mine in the British Commonwealth. Underground tunnels stretching over 210 kilometers were dug and the longest one was 16 kilometers alone. These tunnels sometimes reached a depth of up to 650 meters below sea level. Running an operation of this size required a lot of support and over its lifetime, the Britannia mine employed 60,000 people coming from 50 different countries. The first mill at Britannia Beach was constructed in 1905. After just nine years, it was replaced with an upgraded second mill that was better suited for the job. The second mill ran for another seven years till 1921, but was destroyed in a fire. Finally, the third mill was constructed in 1923 and continued to be used until the end of operations in 1974. This is the iconic structure that is still on site today. Life in the mines was tough, and it's estimated that almost 100 people lost their lives over its 70-year history. Additionally, the mine was subject to not one, but two natural disasters. In 1915, a large landslide wiped out the Jane workers' camp near the mine. It's estimated that 56 men, women and children lost their lives in that tragedy. Just six years later, tragedy struck again. Heavy rains and debris caused the creation of a natural dam on one of the rivers in the nearby area. Further downstream, the town had no way of knowing that the blockage was creating a rather substantially sized lake. Until in the evening on October 28, 1921, the dam finally gave way and a huge wall of water rushed downstream, clearing everything in its path. 37 lives were lost in the disaster. In 1987, Britannia Mine was designated as a National Historic Site. The most iconic building on site is Mill 3, also known as the Concentrator, a 20-story gravity-fed building used for ore processing. The museum also preserves another 23 historic buildings, 7,000 artifacts, and almost 10,000 archival photos related to the mill. Visitors to the museum are treated to the mining experience by being given a ride into the historic college tunnel. This tunnel was constructed in 1914 to transport ore from the original mill buildings to the shore of Britannia Beach. Alright team, that is the end of our train ride. Welcome to your first training ship. As I said, I need your help looking for our very important copper mineral. Does anyone remember the name of that copper mineral? Pyrite. Very good guess, that's the second half of it. Does anyone recall the first half of it? Calcopyrite. Yeah, very good, calcopyrite. All right, team, so does uh, anyone remember what color that calcopyrite was? Gold. Yes, gold and shiny, right? Okay, good. Now, one of our explorers includes a man by the name of Mr. Alexander Forbes. He often came to this mountain up by, uh, all by himself to do this task all day long. Non-stop. Does anyone feel like doing that for eight hours? <laughs> yeah, very tempting, right? Thankfully, they were not breaking down the entire rock face like this, though. They were making a hole, though, that they would fill with something. You probably saw it on your train ride in. Does anyone know what that was? It's in a big red box on your left. Dynamite. Dynamite. Dynamite, yeah, explosive. That's much faster than a drill steel. So they were making holes that they would fill with that dynamite. And once they did, they would clear out the area, blast that rock apart, and that rock pile would fall to the ground. Then they needed to sift through and look for that calco pirate. Lucky for them, they did find enough here to get this place operating. So it ran from 1905 to 1974. This is an air-powered drill, so when it's hitting that rock, there's a lot of rock dust going into the air, and this rock happens to have silica in it. And when that's inhaled, because they didn't have breathing protection back then, 
that leads to a very deadly disease called silicosis, which to this day does not have a cure. So I'm just turning the air on first. All right, here's cover number one. Okay. Once the mine tour is over, the whistle sounds to end the shift. Next up, visitors have the chance to experience Boom, which is Britannia Mine Museum's newest attraction. This multi-sensory experience brings Mill Number no. 3 to life and introduces audiences to the story, sights and sounds behind this architectural marvel. Boom features multiple screens, 30 speakers and cutting edge special effects and allows you to experience the rumble of mill machinery as it follows the path of ore being processed throughout 20 stories of this incredible building. The raw ore was received at the top of the mine, 230 feet up, and then was refined by using gravity to pass down through eight levels of the concentrator before reaching the bottom. When it reached the bottom, it was piped directly into the hold of a cargo ship for transport. I wasn't allowed to film during the show, but you can see from the mine itself just how grand the scale of this operation was.
here's a collection of core samples that were taken to help identify the location of mineral-rich veins of ore. All of this mining took a toll on the environment, causing acidic rock damage that leached into the nearby streams, rivers and ocean. Environmental protections didn't exist when the mine was first constructed, but this was beginning to become a concern as early as the 1930s. At that time, the mine water started to be fed through long troughs containing iron scraps. A chemical reaction would cause the iron pieces to become coated in copper and prevent the heavy metals from entering the outgoing water. This limited the environmental impact, but it was actually done for economic, not environmental reasons. See, once the copper attached itself to the iron pieces, it could be collected and sold for profit. When the mine was finally closed, the owners did a couple of modifications to help prevent further damage, including lengthening a discharge pipe. They also installed an earth dam to help keep the water from leaching into Britannia Creek, which worked for a period of time until the dam failed sometime in the 1980s or 1990s. Since then, environmental cleanup has taken a top priority, and today the mine water is collected and treated at the Britannia Mine Water Treatment Plant. The outflow of water is only released into Howe Sound after the acidity caused by the heavy metals is neutralized and the metals are removed. The historic atmosphere of the museum has caused it to be a desired location for many feature films and television productions. Some of the notable filming on site included Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, an episode of The X-Files, The Man in the High Castle, and MacGyver. Throughout the museum, you also have the chance to explore mining artifacts. Like this man car, which was used to convey 12 people at a time into the depths of the mine. You can further explore the history of the mine and see models of the mine when it was in operation. And learn about how materials mined at the mill were used, like as in the prevention of cholera. One of the other popular activities for visitors to the mine is to try their hand at gold panning. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed finding out a little bit more about the historic Britannia mine. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share. And until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.